Let's do it, then. Let us do it. All right. So we, are we on? Yeah. All right. Um, before I begin, I just want to give a quick uh, up, up message from Brother Homer. Um, he says, My brethren, please thank your whole Bible study on behalf of my family for everything they did Saturday to make Isaiah's fundraiser successful and meeting our goal for his upcoming stem cell therapy. Thank you and God bless you, Brother Homer and Familia. So, and amen, we're going to continue praying for them and believing for them, and, and we know that God's going to answer that. Praise the Lord. Okay. So, um, Brother Robert asked me to preach. Uh, I'm uh, humbled and, and I'm, um, um, I'm honored to be asked to preach up here. Um, so let's get into the Word. I don't want to be long-winded today because um, I already smell good food cooking. <laughs> right when I walk in the door, I'm all, I'm all oh no, it's just donuts today. No, no, that's a, I can smell it. I can smell it. But... Um, Today, uh, if you need a title for this message, um, Sister uh, Sister Norma, it's called Chicken Little. Chicken Little. Chicken Little. That's what it's called. Chicken Little. Okay. Um, you know, uh, again, just bear with me. My style of preaching is uh, I'm always going somewhere. Just don't think that I'm rambling sometimes. But it's going somewhere. But. Uh, so let's 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 turn to a, a familiar scripture, uh, and I uh, we've talked about this before, but let's go to First Kings chapter nineteen. If you have your Bibles with you, I'll give you guys a few seconds, and uh, then I'll start reading. So uh, again, the title's Chicken Little. <laughs> Chicken Little. Open your hearts, guys. Uh, I really feel that God was ministering to me to. to to talk about this, um, you'll see why. I mean, we were even talking about this earlier, and I was quiet because I didn't want to give up my points already. But we were talking about this a little bit. So, so First Kings chapter nineteen. Oh, first, first Kings, Kings chapter nineteen. Um, okay, so First Kings chapter nineteen, verse one says, "And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and." Without how he had slain all the prophets with sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw that, Elijah, he rose and went for his life. He came to Bathsheba, which belonged to Judah, and he left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat under a juniper tree and requested for himself that he might die. And said, It is enough now, O Lord. Take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. And as he lay and he slept under the juniper tree, behold, an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we come before you, God, loving and thanking you for everything. God, I come up here, God, your humble servant, asking God that you just use me, God, to minister your word, God. I want no credit, God. I want, God, all I want is for you, God, to speak through me. Don't allow my flesh, God, to get in that way, God. I just pray, God, for the words to be set forth, that you open our hearts and receive your word, God. In my name is Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 All right. So. Here we go. Many years ago, many years ago now, I mean, I know it doesn't seem like it, but 1999 was out of the... Do you guys remember 1999? I mean, I was, I think, 11 at the time, but... 19. Yeah, I was joking. But 1999, uh, there was, there was this, this thing called the Y2K. Yes. You remember that? Oh, man. Everyone was afraid. They're afraid that uh, whatever, when it hit 2000, the, the numbers weren't going to be able to, and everything relied on these computers, yeah. and oh, all, everything's going to go down, your phone's going to go down, the, the TVs, the, the, the cars are going to crash because they have computer chips, the planes are going to crash, they, I think they didn't want to fly 
the planes, I think, at, 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 yeah, at exactly. midnight when it, when it made that flip. Okay. So, and then a few years, and then so, what happened? Nothing, Nothing. right? Nothing. Nothing. But, oh man, it was all. Nice. So a few years later, 2012, I don't know if you guys remember yeah. this, the Mayan calendar. Yeah. Oh, the Mayan calendar, you probably have it tattooed on your back. Just kidding. No, <laughs> no man. But, I, I don't know. the Mayan calendar, yeah. oh, it says that, it, that it's the rules, that, and the Mayan calendar is going to end in, what was it, yeah. eight? December something? Yeah, December yeah. 21st, or the yeah, Mayan calendar the ends, right? So what did they say? Apo apocalypse is going to yeah. happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, apocalypto. Yeah, ap apocalypse gonna happen. <laughs> oh man, the, the world's gonna end. Well, guess what happened? Nothing happened. Yeah, December twenty second or whatever day it was happened. Anyway, nothing. nothing happened. All right. Um, what happened the other day? April eighth. Yeah. Oh man, the eclipse is gonna happen. There's gonna be earth, there's gonna be earthquakes. Yeah. There's gonna be. Oh, you better collect some water. Yeah. You better. Oh man, get some food. And I mean, you you man. Yeah. All that stuff, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, what's happening right now? Nothing. Hey, there's a, something's gonna happen. Uh, a war's gonna happen in 24 hours or 48 hours. You know, it's coming. It's coming. It might come though, but everybody, it, 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 it's coming. You guys better stock up and get ready, man. The the the, the ro you know, World War Three is coming. I mean, if you go back to 1942. Or whatever, 1940, when Hitler was invading all these countries and doing all this. Hey, the world's going to end. God's coming back. Mm -hmm. The rapture's coming back. You know, like, it, it's, the world's going to end. No. Okay, go hear me out. So, apocalypse, food shortages, waters, earthquakes. Pandemic. Pandemic, COVID, COVID, COVID. 2019. COVID. Oh, that's it. The world's going to end. COVID. Here we go. Earthquakes, water, food, lions, tigers, and bears. Oh, my. <laughs> I don't know. You guys know. You guys know Wizard of Oz. Yeah. You never. They were all afraid. They're all tired of this. Oh my! Tired of this. Oh my! Oh my. That's what they were saying. Oh man! Then they, they started scaring each other. Woo! Woo! Running, running, running around. You remember that? So what happens when that, when that, when that, when all these these things come? Rumors of war. You know all these things. All these. Your lives are disrupt. Is disrupted. Your lives are disrupted because of all this going on. All these things that you're hearing, all these things, right? Your peace is being taken from you. So let me ask you. Well, now I'm gonna ask you. I'm gonna tell you what's the definition of peace. It's a rhetorical question because I'm gonna answer the question. I have it already here. The definition of peace is freedom from disturbance. That's the definition of peace. Freedom from disturbance. And what's disturbance? Interruption of peace. So it's kind of almost the same thing, one without the other. But so if you so if there's disturbance, you're not having peace. Okay. So when we read in our, what well, we read in our lesson about Elijah, what happened to Elijah? He started hearing rumors, right? He started hearing Jezebel. Hey, I want him dead. So this guy Elijah. Just killed, how much prophets was it that he killed on the mountain? It was uh, 10,000. 10,000 prophets that Elijah went up a, a Baal, I believe. Or, or 2,000, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah, whatever it was. It was thousands. It was a lot of them. He just went up again. He's one man in the Bible that can say that he called down fire from heaven. Fire from heaven. Build it all, burnt, burnt those guys. Burnt those guys. And then I think he had them all killed. He said, oh, I think that fire didn't kill all of you? We're going to have him killed. Kills all those people. Mm -hmm. And then he hears lions, tigers, and bears on mine. And he runs. He just caught on fire from heaven. And this lady he started, he started hearing these things. And guess what? Elijah he got, th he, he, he got threatened. He got this bad news. Like we hear all the time on the news. And his peace got disturbed. His peace, got, all that peace he had, got disturbed. And, 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 and what we read is Elijah crawls under a tree or goes in the mountains, whatever, and he just wants to die. He wants to sleep and he says, I want to die. His peace was disturbed. So, I titled this message Chicken Little, like I said. 
Has anybody ever heard that story of Chicken Little? Yeah. Chicken Little was was a was a story from I think Grimm's Brothers or some old folk story from Germany or whatever from the 1800s. Um, so some people call it Chicken Little. In the hood, they call it Chicken Licking. And yeah, no, that's what, that's what sometimes they know it as Chicken Licking. And and in uh, like Germany, it's called Henny Penny. Henny Penny. And so what happened to Chicken Little is this guy was the youth chicken and he started walking and an acorn hit him on top of his head. Or in some stories a nut fell on top of his head. He said the world's world's Yeah, boop. And then he then he goes, Oh the sky is falling. The sky is falling. He runs and so Chicken Little starts running around and he and he starts telling other chickens. Hey, the sky is falling. The sky is falling. The sky is falling. And so they all start. So he, so he gets people with them, and they're going around. The sky is falling. The sky is falling. And then uh, they come, they come, and they find a wolf. And they tell the wolf, "Hey, the sky is falling." And he's like, "Oh yeah, the sky is falling. All right, I'll go with you guys." And so what the wolf does is they're going around, and they're telling them everybody. He's telling the king everybody that the sky is falling. But little by little, the wolf is eating them. One chicken at a time. And until there's no more. Bye bye, chicken little. Does the devil do that to us? Does the devil do it to us Christians? We start hearing all these rumors and, and all these all these things, all this, this stuff to your head constantly. And and, all, and then and to some, to tell you the truth, it starts picking you guys off one by one. Little by little. So, in the, they ask you a question, folks out there in La La Land or <laughs> in here. Is your peace being disturbed this day, tonight? Is your peace being disturbed? Are you listening to negative reports? May, are you hearing stuff at work? Are you hearing stuff on the news? Are you hearing stuff? Are you filling your mind with things? Are you filling your mind? Are are you are you are you reading into these these things? So if you can, let's turn because um, again we hear these things, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes I feel like when we when we uh, when we hear these things, you know, we're constantly listening to. Why do we listen to news? Because we wanna sometimes I think find answers or find. Find, find like what what I seeking something. You're, you're you're seeking something still, and I know this is going to be a little harsh scripture, but but listen to this. Let's turn to Matthew, Matthew, twelve, thirty nine, and don't get. Uh, let's see, It says, an evil and adulterous generation demands a sign. Stop the sign. Don't look for a sign. I'm not calling you guys evil. I'm saying, but don't look for signs. Oh. Don't look for signs. You know, like, this, we're going somewhere with this. Let's turn to Matthew 6. Matthew 6. 34. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. So stop worrying about tomorrow. Stop thinking, oh man, what's going to happen tomorrow? What's what's going to happen in the world? What's going to? What, I'm hearing all these things. I'm hearing all these rumors. I'm hearing all these these, these things. Like I told you, I went over a whole list of things that that were supposed to happen that didn't happen. And what did you gain by that? Stress. Yeah, stress. Exactly what my wife said. God wants us to trust Him and He wants to give us peace. Okay? So, I know i got a lot of scriptures here that's why I'm going quick, but let's go to John 14. John 14, uh, verse 27. It says, Peace I leave you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, because the world doesn't give you peace. Mm -hmm. The world just gets this, like I'm saying, this worries. These give you these. It says, um, I give unto you, let your heart 
be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Don't be troubled, don't be afraid, because God gives you the peace. And then, um, and then in the same book, John 16, 33, it says, I have told you these things, so that this me may, so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. So, like I'm telling you, all these things, and I asked you, and I, and I asked my, I, I, well, I asked you guys, and my wife answered and said, it gives you stress to, to worry about these things all the time? Let me tell you what else this gives you. All these worrying about these things that you hear, it gives you anxiety. Anxiety. And it's ugly brother depression. Boom, she knew it. Anxiety and depression, all this stuff, if you allow this stuff to get in your mind, believe me, stuff getting in your mind, stuff getting in your heart. And this could be not just about stuff you hear, this is stuff uh, like just negativity things that, that you're that you're going through on a daily basis, because we're humans, we go through it. You know, like we sometimes get like Elijah, we just want to sleep under a tree or in a cave. I know, I know, it's not just, you're like, you sometimes want a man. I'm pretty tired. It's not just from work. You just want to crawl up in a ball. And I get it. You don't want to talk to one. You don't want to see no one. Just leave me alone. I just want to, you know. But let me go to, um, and for sake of time, let me go to Philippians. Philippians chapter 4. It says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition and thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, the, and the peace of God will transcend all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So you hear that? I'm going to read that again because I like that. It says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition and thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God will transcend all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. What verse was that? That's um Philippians six and seven. Oh um no. I'm Four, sorry. six, and seven. Yes. Four, six, and seven. You know, uh, and this is a. And now I get why pastors always say this is a freebie. Let me tell you guys. Uh, let me tell you this is a, this is a freebie. I'm not gonna charge you guys for this one, but I, I always wanted to say that. Um, <laughs> uh, but that's Christianese joke, guys. Uh, on La La Land, that's a Christianese joke right there. But uh. We, we sometimes, you know, what was I saying? <laughs> huh? Oh, 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 You know, again, we just got to get caught the piece. I forgot what I was going to say. I, I said all that and I lost my train of thought. <laughs> but, uh, okay, so now, I didn't leave you guys. I didn't preach all of that to, to, oh, here we go. I remember now. Is there another say? The reason why I, I read off all those scriptures to you guys, this is the free, this is the free one. I read all these scriptures to you guys because let me tell you, let me give you an insight. Sometimes you want to, you want to make your, your prayers more powerful, recite those scriptures. Say them while you're reading, read the scriptures while you're praying and, you, and watch the, watch the power of God in it. But that's the preview. That's what I wanted to say. But so this is so here we go. Um, I'm not gonna leave you with you know all the all the negativity. You know, oh you you just you you listen to the to the TVs and all. This is what I wanna say. I wanna tell you how you get that piece. This is what I wanna say how you, how you get that piece. Here we go. First, turn to God. Mm -hmm. Turn to God. Anything you're going through. Mm -hmm. I'm getting a bad report from the doctors. Uh, uh, my boss, my boss is, is a bad boss. I don't know. Whatever is happening. Um, rumors of war. You know, another pandemic. Another world-ending event's going to happen. Hey, these comments are coming in seven years. Whatever. Mm -hmm. You know. Turn to God. To be turned to God, then, then. What do you have to fear if, if you turn to God? Here's another one for you guys. Live right. If you live right, 
I don't think that you should have to worry. Because if you're living right and you're in God's will, then you know that God is, is, is protecting you. God's going to get bless you. God's going to cover you. He's going to give you all that if you live right. Live right. But that comes with that. That's not easy. That's easier said than done. You know? Because, I mean, like I said, we can go on for days on that, you know? Things that we do sometimes, you know? Maybe sometimes we're not living as right as we should. But live right. If you live right, you'll get that peace. Believe me. You're like, I ain't worried about nothing. If, God, if I get hit by this car right now, I'm going to heaven. That's right. I know. So, so, so why would you have to worry about anything else if, if, if you're living right? That's what my mom always tell me. So anytime, get right with God. Get right. You know, like you better make sure you're right with God. You know, like my mom always. You better make sure you're right with God. That and then she she would always tell me when I left the house. Bible um, Dios and uh, yeah, what she say? No, not Bible. And um, how do you say? Behave yourself. Portate um, bien. Portate bien and Bible Dios always. Portate bien and behave yourself. Always tell me all the time. There's another one for you guys. It's how to get the peace. Pray. Pray. We gotta pray, guys. We gotta pray. And we're not talking about rub a dub dub thanks for the rub. Yep. We're not talking about, you know, like just the 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 stereotypical and nothing's wrong with them, but I'm saying but like just the prayers, oh, our Father, art in heaven, how be it. No. Pray to God. Seek God. <clears throat> Build that relationship with God. If you know, believe me. You know that God's in your corner again. You will have that peace that I'm talking about. You will have peace in this time. Um, next one. Trust God. Amen. Just trust Him. You gotta trust Him. You know, sometimes we don't have that trust in Him. Again, why don't you have that trust in God? Again, let's go. Let's connect the dots. Are you living right? Are you praying to Him? Because right. if you're not trusting in God, then there, maybe there's no relationship. Get that again. Grab that relationship again. It's never too late. That's one thing that I can say in this world. It's never too late with God. You can be on your last ten breaths of, of, of air. You still cry out to God and He'll hear you. Remember the thieves on the cross? The last, last words they were cried out to God, one of them, and, and He said, you're going to be with me in heaven today. Um... Here's a new one. Here's another one for you. Let God fight your battles. Let God fight your battles. Oh, man, we go through so much. I mean, those of, those of us in the work field and, and all that, we go through so much. Or, or even with family members, you know, uh, husbands, wives, uh, anybody. But you, your children, whatever. But just let God fight your battles. Don't fight them. Don't fight them because you're not going to win. Let me give you an example on that. Let me give you an example on that. When my my son, well, my, my son sometimes say around Christmas or birthdays, a lot of people buy him toys that, that have a bunch of parts. And then he's like, Dada, put this in. I go, okay, I'll be over there right now, mijo. Yeah, I said mijo. <laughs> but I said, yeah, I'll be there right now, I'll put it together for you. Or I'll help you. Okay. I said, hold on, I'll go over there right now. There it goes, right? By the time I get over there, what's this? Everything's all mixed up. All the parts are over. Some of them are broken. Yeah, it's all broken. The paper. Where's the paper? I'm like, where's the paper? Where's the paper that it comes with? Yeah, the instructions and the numbers are missing and all that. But what happened? He fought his own battle, right? He started doing stuff. So sometimes we start doing that. As, as Christians, we, we, we have a Father in Heaven that will fight your battles for you, but you start putting things, trying to put things together yourself. Yep, you start doing it yourself. And then when God gets there, He's like, man, you know, like, hold on, like, we gotta, now we gotta undo all, we what gotta do, we gotta figure this out. It's gonna take longer. <coughs> yep. It's gonna, you, you know? So we gotta let Him fight our battles. Okay. Here's, a, here's one for you. The good one right here. These are just off the top of my head. I know that's not all of them, but these are just... Feed your mind with God. Amen. Feed your mind with God. Let's not only talk about music, you know what I mean? You could listen to, what if my dad said, 
Puff Mad Doggy or whatever. You can listen to Brentwood. You can listen to whatever. Uh, but feed your mind with God. Not just musically. On, 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 on TV, you know? Uh, TV, the news. If you're feeding your mind with junk, if you're listening to CNN, oh, I'm just kidding. But if you're, you know, like, but if, you're, if you're hearing, if you're hearing all this negativity all day, if you're hearing all these, 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 these rumors and reports of, of this, or you're, again, if you're searching for signs and, and wonders, and <clears throat> you're not feeding your mind with what you, and that's why when something happens, your mind goes on to this chaos. Because you have all this pump. Oh my God, it's the, this world's coming. Lions, tigers, and bears are mine. You know, there you go again. There you go again. Because you've been feeding your mind with junk all day. Stop feeding your mind with junk. I don't know if you guys ever heard of this pastor, or this preacher actually, evangelist named Smith Wigglesworth. Yeah. Anyone ever heard of that? He was from the early 1900s. Powerful, powerful uh, man of God. Uh, one of the last people that I've read about that, that God used to bring people back to life that were dead. And this was in the 1900s in America. He was doing this stuff. And Smith Wigglesworth, <clears throat> there's a story. He used to have this, um, he used to have this, uh, I guess you would say his disciple named um, Lester Summerall. Mm -hmm. And one day he told Lester Summerall, hey, meet me at my house in the morning and we'll, we'll leave from there. And Lester, Lester Summerall said, cool. Lester Summerall came over his house and innocently walked into his house carrying a newspaper in it under his arm. And then Smith Wigglesworth stopped him. He said, what are you doing? He goes, get that out of my house. You don't, I don't want you to bring those lies into my house. But he knew something, right? That it, it's a bunch of lies. It's a bunch of lies. It's a lies from the devil. It's a lies that people, that politicians or people want to spin sometimes. And it's it, you don't need you don't need to hear that all day. You don't need to feed your. Back then it was like this, but now it's like it's like this. You know, like no more newspapers. It's iPads and all that. You know, you're feeding your mind with this stuff. Social media. <clears throat> yep. Social media. There you go. I, I didn't even get to that that yet, but but yeah, thank you. Social media. You see stuff on there. Oh man, this is happening. Oh, they're killing people over here. Oh, they're shooting people. Or even even other things that God. I mean, not God, but or even other things that plays with your mind. You see on those social medias. Again, you're not feeding your mind with this piece of God. You're feeding your what? What? The devil's poop. <laughs> I don't know. I say the devil's poop. That's it, you're, you're feeding your mind with your mind. And I know that maybe some of us may not like this sermon, but this is the this is reality. Yeah. Social media, right? Uh, no, I don't. We don't need that. No. no social social. I don't have no, yeah, I don't have no social media. Um, try to find me, I don't have no. Um, <laughs> la, la, la. Oh, I thought he was laughing. I thought he liked that one. Huh? <laughs> oh, he's weak. Okay, so. Almost done here. Now, here's one. Allow God. Get, let your heart give God permission to, 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 to move in your, your mind, to allow, allow Him to give you that peace. Sometimes I think, and I know this is going to be controversial what I'm going to say here. I know you guys like controversy, but this is what I want to say. Sometimes I think that, this is going to be weird, sometimes people like to be victims. They do. So they rather not and have peace and be the victim. You're the pobrecito. You know, I don't know why. It doesn't make sense to me. But they want to be the victims. When God wants to give us Christians and us children courage and 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 prosperity and and joy and peace. What I'm preaching about peace. But instead, you just want to stay there under a rock. Like Elijah, and and say like and, and want to be the victim instead of just allowing God, allow God to give you that peace. Allow Him to, allow God to heal, you, to heal your mind. Allow Him to. And the next one I had was, um, let go. It's it goes with that. Allow God and let go. Let go of whatever is holding you back from that peace. Stop being a, a victim. I know that's not nice. 
I told you this was going to be a nice sermon, but stop being a victim. Allow God to give you the peace and stop feeding your mind what, what, what the world is saying. Feed your mind with God. And again, don't be a chicken little Christian. That's what I probably should have named it, chicken little Christian. But don't be a chicken little Christian. I, 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 hope, I hope you guys got something from what I'm saying today. Yeah. Being like, again, I know that, that we love we love our TVs and we love we love but you know what does the Bible say about if 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 your if your eyes cause you to sin then cut it out <laughs> or your hand yeah. cause you to sin cut it off or whatever? Yeah. I'm not telling you guys to do that because that's that's pretty extreme. You'll probably get locked in a mental mental home if you do that stuff. But <laughs> Is it possible to, to cut your social media out? Yeah. Is it possible to stop using the internet so much? Your phones? Is it possible to stop watching the TV so much? I'm talking about stuff if it's causing you to sin. If it's causing you to, to be worried all the time. Is it, if it's causing you to have anxiety. If it's causing you to be confused. Or separated from God. Yeah. If it's separating you from God, then cut it. Huh? Try to see which hand looks good on the TV. Cut it. You know? Cut it. And so again, that's what I had today, what God what God gave me today. And and I just like I challenge you guys. I challenge you guys. Just open your heart to God to let God give you that peace and don't let the world give you what they want to give you. The world the, your ears ears hear a lot. Your ears and the ears connect to your brain and your heart. If if, if that's if, if you're gonna live like don't you can't live like that. I say I I've heard so many people that have anxiety, depression, all that. Sometimes they feel I can't live like this no more. I can't take this no more. Don't take it. Let God give you that peace. Amen. Let's pray, bro. Let's pray. Let's bow our heads. Yes. Your Lord, Heavenly Father, God, I love you, God, and I thank you, God, again. I give you all glory and honor, God. God, I just pray, God, this word, God, that was brought forth this day, God, I just pray that you would plant those seeds in our hearts, God, and water them, God, and allow them to grow in our hearts, God. God, if there's things in our lives that are causing us, God, to not have your peace and not allow your peace in, in God, and, and then I just pray, God, that you take away those things or give us strength, God, to fight off and, and cut those loose, God. Because, God, we want to hear your word, God. I know that we live in a world that's chaotic, God. I know that there's a lot of things going on that can happen or can't happen. But, God, we can't live like that. we got to just trust in you and believe in you and allow you to give us a peace. Because we know, God, in this life or the next, you, you're going to have our backs, God. You're going to hold us in your hands, God. And, Lord, I just pray this day, God, that you would just have your peace, God, transcend on all of our lives and all of our minds and all of our hearts, God. And I just praise you and I thank you, God. And I love you for all that you've done. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, folks out there. God bless you.